Welcome Climate Viewers. My name is Jim Lee from Climate Viewer News at climateviewer.com and today my presentation is the climate changers and water wars technocracy geoengineering and replacing the water cycle this is a very important topic i hope that you guys will pay close attention this presentation will be available at climateviewer.com geoengineering and it is about the big picture about how technocrats and globalists are seeking to control water worldwide and replace the natural water cycle with technological fixes and control. First up we have what is a technocrat? Well technocracy started in the 1930s and it's basically scientists and technicians that want to replace capitalism with energy-based economy. George Orwell believed that technocracy would result in a scientific dictatorship, and it has. I suggest everybody check out Patrick Wood's excellent book, Technocracy Rising. Technocracy and geoengineering has pretty much five steps to it. Ruin the ocean, kill the trees, kill bacteria, replace it with artificial clouds and eventually geoengineering. This is a horrible process of destroying what used to be the natural water cycle and replacing it with all of their geoengineered weather modification technologies. The real agenda behind climate change. Forget CO2. You're going to get the full picture tonight. Destroy the oceans. They've coated the oceans in plastic. Fukushima Daiichi nuclear meltdown has irradiated the entire Pacific. There are nuclear waste dumps all over the ocean. And they've covered the oceans in ship tracks. This is obviously a bad thing and it's caused the loss of phytoplankton, which is a necessary part of our hydrological cycle. In addition, it's shallowed the upper layers of the ocean, which has led to less evaporation. This is something that has uh, really interrupted our normal water cycle. I got a great infographic here on what that plastic pollution looks like they're called gyres the biggest one is the North Pacific gyre also known as the North Pacific garbage patch and plastic particulates are, are poisoning the upper layers of the ocean and leading to less evaporation bioaccumulation in all marine life and interrupting our water cycle well, they're also interrupting our water cycle by the destruction of phytoplankton. And phytoplankton naturally regulate global temperatures and make clouds. And this is something called the claw process or claw hypothesis. Normally, we would have warming. Warming temperatures and less clouds lead to phytoplankton growth, which means increased dimethyl sulfide cloud seeds. Increased cloud cover reflects sunlight back to space, leads to cooling. Cooler temperatures lower phytoplankton, which results in less dimethyl sulfide cloud seeds and less clouds. Finally, more sunlight hits the ground, temperatures rise, and plankton begin to grow again. So this is the way that climate change is normally regulated on our planet. Phytoplankton play a huge role in this. However, we are interrupting that process through poisoning the oceans and covering the oceans in artificial clouds. Why would the phytoplankton make clouds if they assume they already did it? And then we go on to step two, destroy the forests. Well, forests, it turns out, trees also make cloud seeds or aerosols that create clouds and at CERN's Cosmics Leaving Outdoor Droplets or Cloud Experiment, Jasper Kirkby and company um, basically created clouds in a chamber and came to the conclusion that this uh, would indicate a potentially cooler future and the study suggests future temperatures may not rise as quickly as predicted. What it means is we don't have to fear clean air. 
And it really touches on the Gaia hypothesis because it's a beautiful mechanism for trees to control their environment. The reason why trees are so important is because we had climate change before. That was during the Dust Bowl. And during the Dust Bowl, we solved it by planting trees. This was something known as the Great Plains Shelter Belt where the U.S. government planted 220 million trees in a windbreak all along the Rocky Mountains. Those trees helped um, cut down on erosion and fixed climate change in the 1930s. However, the shelter belt trees are now being cut down. Next up, we have destroy the bacteria. Well, bacteria actually play a huge role in creating clouds as well. There's particularly one called Pseudomonas syringae, and it's a bacteria that creates ice. And unfortunately, it also creates ice on crops. So what do they do? They genetically modified Pseudomonas syringae to call it ice minus. It was trademarked as frost ban and it was released into the wild. Activists at the time said that it would cause more death and destruction than all the wars we ever fought. One uh, individual alleged that modified bacteria may decrease rainfall. This is from an article by Dr. Rick Shankman called Genetically Modified Weather the Tale of Frost Band Synthetic Bacteria. Bacteria play an important uh, role in cloud seeding and creating clouds. Recent discoveries show rain making bacteria more efficient in forming these ice nuclei than inert particles due to their size and surface area. Um, ski resorts exploit this property by using attenuated bacteria for seeding of artificial snow. Wow, there's something you don't hear every day. Um, and that's an actual picture of Pseudomonas syringae on the side over there. This, uh, this bacteria plays a very important role in it's, you know, being attacked through synthetic ice minus and obviously pesticides. So the increased use of pesticides are threatening this bacteria. But the biggest part of the technocrat plan to replace the water cycle is through what's called accidental geoengineering. And that's um, done with ship tracks as seen on Climate Viewer 3D at climateviewer.org right here and contrails which create cirrus clouds and uh, you know alter the radiation budget of the planet have been blamed for melting the poles but of course melting the poles has been a hundred year agenda. Artificial clouds, technocrats have decided to replace natural cloud formation with technological fixes dubbed accidental geoengineering. And you can see two articles here, one from MIT Technology Review, we're about to kill a massive accidental experiment in reducing global warming. And they're referring to the upcoming ban on bunker fuel that would reduce ship tracks. And on the other side, we have airplane contrails may be creating accidental geoengineering. So there's two cases, ship tracks and aircraft, where they just call it accidental geoengineering. Don't you know that, that we're not doing any of this on purpose? It's completely an accident. But anybody with a brain by now realizes that this is no longer an accident. From the Arctic Methane Emergency Group, they said, for instance, in their letter to world leaders in their strategic plan 2012, the regulation to ban bunker fuel for ships should be relaxed while encouraging continued use of bunker fuel where resulting aerosol emissions might be beneficial. That's not an accident. That's a let's use this because it's doing exactly what we want. This sort of pollution cools the planet, so let's continue doing it. Dr. Rangasai Thori from the Aviation Climate Change Research Initiative, who I interviewed, said we would like to have more contrail-induced cirrus clouds during the day and none during the night. Ken Caldera, a geoengineer, said seeding is 
uh, limited to high latitude winters or nighttime seeding, that they could avoid ever doing geoengineering because cirrus clouds trap heat in. This was discovered in the 9-11 groundings of all flights and followed up by a 2008 volcano where they were able to observe these planes making clouds and realize that they are trapping heat like a blanket over the planet. But regardless, that also helps the agenda of melting the Arctic, which has been the agenda all along. I have a great infographic here on what's called solar radiation management and earth radiation management. Please check out the slides later on. But that brings us to, you know, the real crux of what technocracy is all about, and that is weather weapons and weather warfare and weather modification. And this is my 10 technologies to own the weather today slide. Weather modification has a history that started back in 1800 with pluviculture, 1946 to present with cloud seeding, followed by weather warfare using cloud seeding and geoengineering, 1994 to present and I, I picked that date because that's when Lawrence Livermore National Labs and Dr. Evil decided to do the current push for uh, weather modification. How does cloud seeding work? Well, snowpack augmentation, ground-based cloud seeding generators to put snow on top of mountains, aircraft, silver iodide, dry ice, urea, fertilizer, carbon black dust, and even concrete are burned or dropped from planes to create clouds. Um, and rainfall, downwind effects, cloud seeding can lead to drought from overseeding clouds, can increase storm intensity, increase hail and flood damage, and this leads to the loss of crops, property, and life. Uh, weather warfare was done over Vietnam, it was known as Operation Popeye, it was done by the CIA, but most people don't know that Henry Kissinger and the CIA did it in secret and never even told the Secretary of Defense, Melvin Laird. The CIA also did a rain embargo on Cuba where they made sure that rain did not fall on the Cuban crops, but the seeding near Cuba was to cause less rain. You may say we tried to embargo rain clouds. Again, using weather modification to decrease rainfall. How we made the Chernobyl rain. We made rain clouds that would wash out radioactive particles. And basically the, the meltdown occurred right here they use cloud seeding to rain all of the radioactive material here to keep it from going to Moscow. So they have very good control over the weather. It happened again in the Olympics. Rain can be flushed out before they reach the stadium so that rain won't fall until it's passed over. Precipitation can be reduced. And that was the Chinese uh, during the 2008 Olympics, and they claimed success in being able to stop rain using cloud seeding. So why does it surprise anybody that Iran has claimed Israel stole our clouds? Most people just mocked this statement outright, but there's a lot of truth to what they're saying. He said joint teams from Israel and one other neighboring countries make clouds entering to Iran barren. Moreover, we face with cases of cloud theft and snow theft. And as you can see, here's Europe, which is covered in cloud seeding projects, and Iran is in a big drought. So this can't, that's what we're talking about with the downwind effects of this sort of thing. The Secretary of General of the UN um, said, we're already in a massive experiment on our world. I don't think we should start another set of experiments to go into geoengineering. However, this is the way it works. First, they call it accidental geoengineering with ship tracks and planes. They start writing laws for global governments to exempt them from liability. They begin field experiments like David Key's Scopex. And finally, they end up with legal global deployment. And the purpose of that is that it's all about control. The technocrats want control of your life and weather and water. And who are the technocrats? They're scientists, universities, the global governance community, climate change dollar makers. They're, it's all about the water wars and the military is certainly involved. 
So I hope that you guys will support my Environmental Modification Accountability Act. It is available at climateviewer.com slash nmod based on the Environmental Modification Act, which was the weather warfare ban of 1978. Obviously, weather warfare is still occurring, and that's not going to change anytime soon. Please support my work. You can freely download and distribute this presentation from climateviewer.com slash geoengineering. My name is James Franklin Lee Jr. I go by Jim Lee. Please subscribe on YouTube and check out my three websites, climateviewer.com, climateviewer.org, and weathermodificationhistory.com. If this video resonates with you, leave me a comment because I love hearing from you all. First time here? Be sure to subscribe and click the bell. The bell doesn't always work, so come to climateviewer.com and sign up for our newsletter. Remember, it would be impossible for me to do this without your support, so please join my Patreon or buy me a coffee on PayPal. And always, attack ideas, not people.